please welcome Jason Maloney. And before we get to Jason, I want to talk to Bob. Um, you've gotten to know the Maloney brothers very well. You've gotten to know Jason very well this past year. Um, can you talk about how excited you are for this fight and what you think Jason uh, will bring to the table against the man many experts regard as pound for pound the best fighter in the world? Well, we know that Inouye uh, is been tremendous uh, in the Bantamweight division. Indeed, uh, he is on everybody's pound for pound list. And talking about pound for pound lists, uh, you know, the athletic as their 10 pound for pound lists came out uh, over the weekend and top ranked fighters uh, were seven of those 10 pay a pound for pound fighters. But Jason Maloney is the one fighter, I believe, that has the opportunity to upset and beat Inouye. Uh, it's going to be a tough task, but Jason is a real tough guy and knows how to fight and is not afraid and has the Jason's fight with Inouye will be shown on pay-per-view all over Australia. And we expect hundreds of thousands of Aussies uh, to tune into that fight. Thank you, Bob. And uh, sorry, I, I accidentally muted the boss, Bob. I'm sorry about that. I did not, uh, did not mean to mute you. Um, now joining us on the line, um, again, just as a reminder, raise hand button, private message, shoot me a text um and we will get to your questions but now joining us on the line uh live from las vegas vis-a-vis -vis melbourne australia jason maloney uh jason same question i had for bob i had for you a lot of people in and around the bantamweight division want nothing to do with naya Noe, making excuses not to fight him you're running into you're running into that head first um what you know can you talk about the the confidence and why you feel you're the man to dethrone um arguably the pound for pound best fighter in the world yeah, uh, thanks, Evan. It's good to join you all. And, um, mate, I think every fighter should want to fight the best. That's why we're in the sport. Um, you know, my dream and my goal is to be the best bantamweight in the world, and the only way to, to make that happen is to beat Anui. And I've been working towards this opportunity and wanted this opportunity for a long time, and it's fine here. And um, I'm completely confident and I know I've got what it takes to beat him. And Saturday night's the opportunity to prove it. And I can't wait. I'm ready to go. And our first question, fittingly enough, comes from Down Under. Uh, Jason with Fight View 360 Australia. Uh, please go ahead when ready, sir. Yeah, g'day, Jason. Um, congratulations on the opportunity, mate. Um, my question is that if you are successful, you'll uh, go um, up on the same lines as the biggest upset along with Jeff Horn and Lionel Rose when he defeated Fighting 100 back in 1968. Um, looking to the future, where would you like to fight uh, in Australia and what stadium would you like to uh, bring a huge fight to? Um, you know, what's the um, Eddinghad or Suncorp or uh, ANZ? And uh, finally, the, uh, the uh, grand finals happened on the weekend. Richmond and... Um, uh, the Melbourne Storm got up, as you can see there by my hat. Uh, your thoughts on the uh, grand final for the uh, grand finals for the weekend? Yeah, good day, mate. Um, yeah, look, obviously not looking too far ahead. I've got a big, big task on Saturday night, but um, obviously once I get past the Nui, uh, the sky's the limit, and I would love to have a massive, you know, super fight down under in Australia. And you know, I, I think being from Melbourne myself. Uh, the absolute dream venue would probably be the MCG. To pack out the MCG with 100,000 people would be the the ultimate goal and the ultimate dream. Um, and being in Anui and, and becoming, becoming uh, you know, a unified world champion and, and one of the, probably the most, probably, this will go down as the biggest win in Australian boxing history. So I think we can get, get a lot of support behind me once I get past the Nui. And if we can fill the MCG, then, geez, how special would that be? Um, and then going on to the other half of your question, mate, um, didn't get to catch any of the any of the grand finals over the weekend, but obviously great to see the storm get up. And, um, yeah, Richmond, Richmond did a great job too. And 
looked like Dustin Martin absolutely cleaned up. So good on him. And thank you very much, uh, Jason. And next we go to Matt from Behind the Gloves. Matt, please go ahead when ready. Hiya, Jason. Um, many people in boxing see Inoue as pound for pound number one and also one of the most dangerous punchers in boxing at the minute. What do you see in his game that you feel that you can exploit going into your fight on Saturday? Yeah, obviously a great fighter. I've uh, got a lot of respect for him. And obviously, like you said, he's he's got great power. But um, I, I, see, I see chinks in his armour. I think when he is extremely aggressive and obviously backs his power the way he does, he does come in reckless at times and, and can, you know, he is there to be hit. And he can be, the, you know, as Don Air showed, he can be hit and he can be hurt. Um, and I just back my ability, mate. It's um, it's not like I'm just looking at a new like, oh, I can see this big weakness. Uh, I want to fight him for that reason. I want to fight him because I want to be the best. And I back my ability. And I know how hard I've worked over the past 17 years to get to this opportunity. And uh, I believe in myself. And I'm going to do absolutely whatever it takes to win this fight. You both share a common opponent in Emmanuel Rodriguez. Obviously, you had a close fight with him and Inoue dispatched him in two rounds. Um, but do you see this fight as basically a case of styles make fights and that you're prepared to fight, you know, fire with fire and meet him in the centre of the ring? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we, we know that uh, even though we share a common opponent, that's not exactly how boxing works just because he beat him and I didn't doesn't doesn't mean anything. And, and to be honest, if... You know, that fight was two years ago and if I was to fight Rodriguez now or even if I was to fight myself two years ago, I reckon I'd knock both of those guys out too. So um, I'm not taking too much away from that common fight or common opponent. Um, I know how much I've improved over the past two years and this is a completely different animal to the one that, that Rodriguez fought. Thank you very much. And now we go to Mike Dixon. Mike, you're uh, asked to unmute, so please unmute and uh, ask your question. Hi, Jason. Um, the Las Vegas Oddsmaker has listed you as an underdog at plus 600. Does this give you like an added motivation or a chip on your shoulder to uh, win on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. I love being the underdog and I, I love proving people wrong. And going out here and, as I've said before, shocking the world. This is the opportunity. I know a lot of people don't give me a chance in this fight and that just gives me extra motivation and an extra fire in the belly to go out there and show people what can be done. You know, people play some of these fighters like Anui and, and like they uh, did do with Lomachenko on this pedestal and think that they're unbeatable, but they're not. They're all, we're all human. We're all got two arms and two legs and everyone has weaknesses. Everybody can be beaten. And uh, I'm going to go out there and show everybody what belief, hard work and having the guts to, to be brave enough and dare to be great can do. And um, I can't wait to go out there and achieve this. Uh, it's going to be very special and I look forward to proving, proving everybody wrong. Thank you very much, Mike. And uh, next we go back down under and I have to say uh, fight week with a prominent Australian fighter does not feel the same without the Australian media here. So on behalf of on behalf of top rank, I cannot wait till the Aussie media comes back. We had some great times during Crawford Horn fight week, especially when you all um, stopped the gym to try and get a look at Terrence Crawford. It was it's some classic moments there. So now on that note, we go to Brock Ellis from Australia Boxing. Brock, please go ahead when ready. Thanks, Evan. It's great to have a, um, an Australian presence here, albeit virtually. Jason, I wanted to ask, do you feel like you're one of the rare fighters to have benefited from the global pandemic? G'day, Brock. How are you, mate? Um, yeah, I do, mate. It's, um, you know, obviously when the whole pandemic hit, it was a pretty scary thought to think that uh, I might have been sitting on the sidelines for the rest of the year. Obviously, I was originally scheduled to fight on April 25th and that fight was called off and it was a scary thought to think that what's going to happen you know I'm 29 years old in the peak of my career and and chomping at the bit to get another chance at the at a world title and I can't fight 
So it was a pretty scary thought. But um, thankfully, I'm signed to the best promotional company in the world in top rank, and they, they didn't let the pandemic stop boxing. They brought it back in the bubble. And I've been given two of the biggest opportunities of my life. And I took, took the first opportunity in June with both hands and had a good performance against Baez. But this one is going to be even better. And I've got the opportunity of a lifetime against the Nui here. And I'm 100% ready to go. And I'm going to grab this opportunity with both hands, put on the absolute performance of my life. And this year will go down, uh, even though it's been such a shocking year for most people in the world, it'll go down as the best year in my life. And just on that bias fight, uh, in Australia, it's widely seen as one of your best, if not your best performance. For those who haven't seen you previously, do you think that's a good sample of what you're capable of? Man, uh, like I was happy with that performance, but I still haven't shown anywhere near what I'm fully capable of doing inside the ring, I don't think. And that's what excites me, uh, that Saturday night, this is where it's my time to shine. This is the biggest platform and this is where I go out and show everybody actually what I'm capable of doing. And, again, I think that's part of the reason I am a big underdog is that people don't know what I'm capable of doing inside the ropes and I'm looking forward to showing it on Saturday night and there's no better way and no better place to show it. Thank you very much, Brock. Uh, now we go back to the United States with Jake Donovan from Boxing Scene. Jake, uh, you have a question for Jason first and then one for Bob, correct? So correct. Uh, shoot when ready, sir. Thanks, Evan. Hey, Jason, good catching up with you again. You uh, too, thank man. you, appreciate it. So um, I, I wanted to ask, what does it mean for you that you and Andrew keep, uh, continue to enjoy this ride together? Not just, you know, that you're, you're fighting on the same schedule, basically, even though two weeks apart this time, but that you're both entering pretty much the biggest fights of, you, of your respective careers at the same time. Yeah, it's very special, Jake. It's, um, you know, me and Andrew walked into the boxing gym together um, for our first day 17 years ago. And Mate, well, there's been a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifices and we've been together every step of the way and, you know, rolled the, ro the roller coaster together. A lot of ups and a lot of downs and a lot of hard work, uh, you know, a lot of blood, sweat and tears. And in three weeks' time, we can get on a plane with four world titles on that plane and go home to Australia and celebrate together with each other, but also our friends and our family and everyone who's supported us since day one. So it's going to be very, very special, mate. And, um, you know, all those years of hard work and sacrifices will all be worth it once we both achieve this dream. Yeah. Uh, firstly, with myself Saturday, but then Andrew obviously on November 14. And uh, it's a very, very exciting thing to think about. And it's, uh, it gives me that extra motivation to go out there and make sure that we get the job done. Great. Thank you so much, Jason. Best of luck with Saturday. And then, Bob, for you, I wanted to ask, as Jason mentioned, he was supposed to, he and Andrew were supposed to come over here in April, uh, in a way, in Casamero, was supposed to fight, I think, right at, a week after Jason's fight. Was it always in the plans that Jason would essentially get this uh, opportunity, even way well, back then? Well, you know, first, uh, Jake, we, we put him in with a very, very good opponent uh, in his last fight. And our matchmakers wanted to see, uh, they had heard about it, they had seen film, they wanted to see for themselves the level of his competence and how good a fighter he was. We had heard all these stories uh, and he passed the test. And so when it came uh, to making the match with Inouye, we felt that it was a very competitive fight and that Jason had a real good chance to upset Inouye. Uh, and so we made the match. Thank you, Bob. And we have uh, one final question for Jason, then we'll let him get back to his day. Cynthia Conte, you should be unmuted. So please go. Ahead. Jason, uh, Inouye is known as a Power. Yeah, Cynthia, you're, uh, you're, can you please, um, there's something going on with your volume. Can you please uh, check, check your volume and, and then ask the question again? Sorry, you just said it, it was a bit muffled. Can you hear me now? Uh, still not great. If you want, uh, try, try, try it once more, maybe speak a little louder and, and maybe we'll be able to take it out. Can you hear me now? 
Perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Inoue is known for his devastating power. There's a reason why he is called the monster. We've seen him in other fights. Uh, he, he's knocked people out in like two rounds or even one round. Talk about your training camp. Have you brought in different sparring partners? Uh, and how do you get how do you get ready for someone's power like that? Well, are you bringing in different weight class uh, uh, sparring partners for this camp? Yeah, look, he's got he's got uh, exceptional power, um, but I I believe that I do too. And in terms of the sparring partners and the preparation, uh, we've had a really good mix of sparring partners. We had some good sparring back home in Australia. Um, and then I've had five different sparring partners that we've been switching through throughout the training camp over here in Vegas. And three of the, three of the guys uh, are actually staying in this house with us at the moment, the sparring partners, and we've had them watching Anui every day. There's, that's their homework, study Anui. And when they come into the ring with me, their job is to be little imitations of Anui. And they, they're jumping in you know, trying to have the same movements and trying to throw the same shots as Anui and trying to give me, you know, the same look that Anui's going to going to, uh, going to give me once we get inside the ring. And they've done a tremendous job. You know, I've been going through 12 rounds and they've been getting in and out and giving me a fresh look and all of them are coming at me as, you know, a mimicked version of Anui. And it's been really great sparring and really great preparation and I couldn't be more ready. Um, you know, it's the fight of my life, but this preparation has been the best, the best preparation I've ever had physically and mentally. I've never been in this sort of, this sort of mind frame or this sort of shape and I'm absolutely ready to go. And I'm confident that after all these years, Saturday night's going to be the best night of my life and can't wait to stand in the ring at the end of that fight with those three bullets around my waist and the sky's the limit after that. Um, and I guess lastly, like you touched on with his power, it's a fight. I know, you know, you can't swim without getting wet. I know I'm going to have to wear some of his shots, but believe me, I can take a shot. I've never been hurt or dropped or knocked out ever in over my 100 fights. Um, I know that I'm going to go have to, you know, take some of his shots and I'm have to, going to have to probably go through a little bit of adversity to win this fight. But as I said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Um, one thing that separates us, uh, I believe, is the will. I don't think anyone in the in, my, in this division wants it as bad as I do. And on Saturday night, I'll, I'll show what I'm willing to go through to make sure that I come out successful. And uh, yeah, and if uh, if some of the undercard fights run short, we're going to show video uh, of him and Andrew sparring one another because I'm sure that. That is some incredible action. So, James, <laughs> sorry, we, t- we, we bugged the gym. You and Andrew Sparring will be on ESPN Plus Saturday night. <laughs> before we go, before we go, Jason, uh, any, any, final, uh, any final thoughts that you want to relay um, to everybody watching and uh, to all the media here today? Yeah, look, thanks for, thanks for your time, everybody. Um, a massive thank you to Bob, firstly, for this opportunity. Obviously, it's the opportunity that I've been working towards um, for 17 years, as I mentioned, and I'm so thankful that the, this opportunity is finally here. On Saturday night, I've got the chance to, to achieve my dreams. And as I said, the preparation's been absolutely fantastic and I'm very, very confident that I'm about to go out there and achieve something very special. So don't miss it. Tune in. Uh, Bob did say that he thinks it's going to be possibly fight of the year and he's a smart man. This is going to be fight of the year and uh, upset of the year as well for a lot of people. And I can't wait. So tune in and uh, watch something very special. Thank you so much for joining us, Jason. Quick programming note. Again, starting at 7.30 Eastern ESPN+. Plus. The entire card will be on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, so we've got the two world title fights, Michaela Mayer, Iwa Bernica, Jason Maloney um, against Inoue. And also in action, we've got Jared Anderson. We've got perhaps the best prospect uh, slash contender in boxing and Jesse Bam Rodriguez, who returns uh, the mini Lomachenko from San Antonio, as I call him. So we got a really stacked card starting at 7.30. Tune in early. And then the two world title fights uh, will begin around 10 p.m. Eastern time, give or take, but have your stream going the entire time because you don't want to miss anything. And I thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Jason. And we will see you all soon. Have a good night.
or a good day and a good night. Goodbye.